Hi guys, Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. I thought I'd give you an update video on this National Lunar uh, battery box. So I've done a couple of modifications to it. I've added an angle fridge socket. So these guys have two pins and a, a screw thread, so they're really a secure system. The, um, the merit type plugs are pretty good as well. So I added an extra USB-C. So two USB-C's and USB-A. The box came with uh, the two regular ones. So it's got one merit plug, and I think I might add two more merit plugs to the system. So that gives me heaps of options for charging up my mobile devices. So I've added a DC to DC charger to the back of the box. So I could have fed it in through the front, but all this front panel here is connected by this. So if this throws out, it's uh, all out. So I added it to the rear, that and I had one. And at the moment it's running off the, uh, the solar on the roof. So I'll turn the box around and I'll show you that. So on the rear here I've mounted the, uh, the projector, DC to DC. This is a 25 amp, two inputs and it can be charged from the car and from a solar. So at the moment it's receiving power from the uh, the solar and I've added these plugs here which are called. So these are trailer vision so they just covers for the regular 50 amp Anderson plugs so that's them in there. So they've got a, a seal in the back which is really quite nice. So what I did when I drilled the box I used o-rings and stuff and uh, not that you have any problem with plastic on plastic so it's made a pretty neat job of it I'll give you a look inside okay guys there's a look inside so I use stainless steel nuts and bolts with nylock nuts so there'll be no vibrating loose from the units as I said they use grommets for everywhere the par cables pass through the box now the cables here they've all been triple insulated with tape convoluted tubing and heat shrink so we shouldn't have any problems it's right above the negative terminal which is a bit unfortunate so I'll put a sleeve over this the next battery I get is probably going to be a 105 amp UASA battery which will fit this box so the wiring is pretty straightforward the original two cables is all that had I've added the rest of it so everything's fused now the vehicle supply point is also fused at the battery so when I'm driving along it can run off the car battery and when I'm stopped it'll run off the solar which is doing quite nicely at the moment so at the moment with a bright sunny sky and cool temperatures for me I'm getting away with a, a 60 watt panel up on the roof so I've got a 115 watt amorphous blanket which should be more than enough to keep up with the fridge if I go remote so as a nice lift out unit I'm really happy with this so I'm not lugging the battery around when I don't need it, which is 99% of the time. And because I live in such a hot environment, these batteries want to be under 28 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hard to achieve. That's basically the temperature on the bathroom floor of my house. So it, I should get a much longer lifespan than I have in the past. Anyway, guys, if this sort of content helps you out and helps you make good things, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.